Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing about an excellent bass bite in the greater Boston area. We are hearing that the canal has continued to put out good catches of uh, stripers all week. We're hearing that the best place in the region for Albies remains Vineyard Sound. And we're hearing about a, the continuation of some very good bass fishing on the Connecticut shore. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's start things off with the hardtail report, and it's been another fickle week. Uh, when I left you guys last week, things were kind of looking up in Rhode Island, and since then they've been kind of rocky again. Um, the fish really haven't filtered into anywhere except for the you know extreme western stretches of South County. So I mean, really, it's, it's the breachways or it's nothing in Rhode Island. Um, they have shown up. At Nebraska Shoal a couple times, they've shown up off of uh, Green Hill, they've shown up off of Weekapog Point, but really it's Kwani and Weekapog that seems to be the area where the most action is happening. If you're not there, you're hoping to get lucky. Um, the only other thing that's really been happening hardtail-wise in Rhode Island is that outside the Harbor Refuge there have been, uh, I wouldn't call it consistent, but there's been a a little bit of a better showing of Benito. Um, and they've been decent size. They're not huge Benito, but it's, it's, it's been decent. Um, but that's, that's really the story in Rhode Island. I mean, Newport has been dead. Sakonet has been dead. Um, Buzzards Bay has been dead. And then once you get through Buzzards Bay up into Vineyard Sound, it starts to pick up again. And the fish seem to be kind of fluctuating back and forth. They're either at the Elizabeths or they're over on Falmouth down to Wacoit and around the corner a little bit from there. Um, those fish are still on smaller than average bait. They're a little tougher to catch. Uh, I talked to a few friends that fished up that way this week and they said, you know, they did better just staying with the bait instead of trying to follow, you know, these schools of, uh, of Albies. They'd find a good ball of bait, they'd stay with the bait and then eventually the elves would find the bait and then they were able to hook up. Um, however, all these guys told me that they did much better on the fly. So that kind of tells you just that the bait's really small and they're just looking for that really small presentation. Um, over in Connecticut, I know we're kind of zigzagging around here, but over in Connecticut, um, it's still been mostly on the New York side. It's still been from Orient down to Port Jeff, you know, in that area and more and, and the further west you go, the better your chances seem to be. I know Montauk had a good week for Albies and, um, and there have been a few sort of isolated schools that have crossed over and are, you know, could be found around the Norwalk Islands or up even over as far east as New Haven. Not much beyond there. Um, and then the only other thing in Connecticut that I know of is, um, is some Spanish mackerel that are still showing up, some at the Hoosie and some at, um, at Millstone. And then the only other kind of strange or fascinating hardtail news is that there were some, uh, there were some Albies in Duxbury Bay. I've never heard of that before. Um, but I did get word of, uh, you know, a few schools of fish out there and not a whole lot of guys chasing them. I think half the guys up there, because they've never seen them before, they probably don't even know what they're looking at, you know. Um, and then there's also been some Spanish mackerel and uh, still some bonito kind of running the beach from the canal up to Barnstable Harbor and back. Um, and at times they've been coming in pretty tight, so there's been a few shots at them from the shore. Um, but they're hanging in up there, so um, you know if you get there on the right day, it might be, you know, it might be a decent bite to get in on. Uh, bluefin tuna wise, I haven't heard a lot from Rhode Island this week, at least for the small fish. Uh, still, those really big giants, you know, off of Point Judith, between one and three miles out, they're on bunker schools. I mean, these are these are big bad fish, you know, up to up to six hundred pounds, and. Um, I, mean, I haven't heard about a lot of the footballs or um, or school tuna this week in in Rody waters. Uh, you you might be able to attribute it just to the fact that the weather's been really up and down. Um, we've had a few calm days the last few days, so maybe we'll get some reports by the weekend uh, of some of those fish showing back up at Block. But the other place that there's been sort of a mixed size of tuna um, has been east of Chatham and then up to Stellwagen. 
Uh, it's definitely finding giants there, but I've seen uh, reports, you know, a fish in the 45 to 60 inch range as well. Uh, those are still, those are still kind of big for, uh, you know, for your typical stand-up tackle, but you can definitely get it done. It's just going to be a handful. And um, yeah, that's the story of Tuna Wise this week. So as I alluded to in the headlines, um, there's been a really good bass bite in the Boston metro area. It has been a day thing and a night thing. Um, daytime fishing has mostly been from boats and kayaks, um, but there have been a few shore spots that have been popping off. And most of these fish are on the small to medium size, but there are some big ones being taken. Um, I can't remember if we mentioned it in the video last week or if it was in the reports over the weekend, but there has been a continued, a continued blitz in the area of Situate, Massachusetts. Uh, first, second and third cliff actually is where the action seems to be centered. There's a lot of peanut bunker there, there's some mackerel there, and there are bass from 20 inches to 45 pounds being taken. Uh, top water plugs have been getting it done, but things like magic swimmers and stuff like that are also getting eaten. Um, I haven't heard anything the last day about whether that's continued, but I know it was still going strong on Sunday. So, um, you know, it's, it's reasonable to, to think that there's still some action there. Up around Boston, um, there's, there's been a lot of nice fish in tight. Uh, guys coming in at night in kayaks, in, uh, in small tin boats and things like that. Throwing eels like basically almost right onto the sand and getting some really nice fish into the 30 pound range, even some bigger ones. Um, surf guys have been getting in on this, but the fish are very mobile. So it's not like you can find them and stay on them. They seem to be moving around quite a bit, uh, probably staying with the schools of bait and um, some really nice fish have been taken. As we head down around the Cape, the uh, the only like big story on the Cape that I heard this week is just a there's a big pod of nice fish that are kind of going back and forth on Nauset Beach. They're not staying in one place. They're kind of moving around and, um, you know, the locals are finding them. They're, they're spreading out and working as a team and they're finding them. And when they get on them, there's some nice fish in the mix. Uh, guys are staying pretty tight lipped about exactly how big they are, which kind of lets me know that they must be pretty nice fish. Um, but the things I'm hearing, the needlefish has been like the, the A-plus number one lure out there. They're throwing a lot of needles from the beach. Guys are getting them on things like hydro minnows and SP minnows and things like that. And also soft plastics. Um, anything long and slender, like a sluggo fished on a jig head, or if the fish are in tight, you can get them on something weightless as well. Uh, bass fishing out toward the Elizabeth Islands has been kind of... I would call it just okay. Um, the reports that I'm getting from the guys that fish that area regularly, topping out at like 18 pounds, most of the fish are more like 12 to 15 pounds, and, um, and much, much more blue, may, uh, many more bluefish in that area than bass right now. Um, but they are there. As you kind of cruise through into Buzzards Bay, the bass bite kind of peters out. And uh, you don't doesn't really pick up with any consistency until you cross over into Rhode Island. Uh, bottom fishing wise, I'm not hearing a whole heck of a lot. Um, I think so many guys are focused on albies that I'm not hearing a lot about uh, Tatog or anything like that. I know the scup bite is still very good. Uh, obviously, sea bass is closed. Uh, we are hearing some good reports about cod up around Stellwagen, and there's been some changes in the regulations that you're going to want to look up as far as the Gulf of Maine goes. Uh, that have made it a little more attractive for someone to take the boat out there and go do some cod fishing. Uh, there's been some haddock out there too, out in some of the deeper waters. Um, but that's that's pretty much what I've been hearing bottom fishing wise in Massachusetts. And the only other thing that I'm hearing is just that the tog bite is really starting to pick up in um, in that area between where what am I trying to say in that area between Mass and Rhode Island. Um, you know, you're kind of on the border. I've been hearing some good reports out there and especially, you know, from further out, um, guys heading out to like coxes and stuff like that are getting some really nice tog, but also, I mean, don't be afraid to fish really tight inshore. Um, this time of the year, a lot of, the, this is probably the best time of year, uh, to find some really big blackfish in tight. And that's the story that I have for you guys this week in Massachusetts. And as we cross over into Rhode Island, the bass bite continues to be pretty good. Um, 
along the shoreline, especially Newport and Narragansett, uh, but it seems to be very dependent on the weather. So on these calm nights like we've had the last few nights, you know, it's been bright moon, clear skies, not a lot of wind, and the bass fishing has really suffered. Um, the only guys I'm hearing about hooking up in those situations are heading out to Block Island and fishing eels, and they're getting some nice fish. But in this area, you know, from Newport over to Narragansett, um, on these days and nights, really, when we've, when we've got some wind-driven waves and the bait's pushed in a little tighter and things are kind of tumultuous and roiled up, the bite's been really good. Um, and, I mean, I would, I would even go so far as to call it excellent. Uh, I fished one night last week with a friend of mine um, fishing off a of beaver tail, and we got into fish like crazy out there. I mean, we, we had... Between the two of us, we easily had 60 fish. Um, and most of and this is all from the surf, uh, almost all on needlefish, few on bucktails, few on soft plastics. And just about all of these fish were slot size fish from 30 inches to 35, with a few up to like 36, 37. Um, and that's been a fairly common story, even in the daytime. Um, you know, first light, last light, got thrown pencils and spooks and poppers. Um, anywhere you've got some of that deeper water just pushing up really close to shore and you've got some, you know, wave action seems to be drawing in these fish. It's just so much bait coming out of the bay right now. And, uh, obviously these fish are taking notice. And then if, if you head up into Narragansett Bay, uh, Mount Hope and up at the, basically like the southern end of the Providence River, there's been a lot of bass around. There's a lot of fish in that same size, you know, say like 26 to 36 inches. Uh, they're on schools of bait and it's basically just old school fall fishing. You're just driving around the boat looking for birds. You pull up, you cast your whatever, you know, your popper or your soft plastic or whatever you feel like really into the blitz. And you know, you're getting on some fish. There are bluefish to 10 pounds mixed in. And um, you know, both of those uh, options are fairly reliable right now. You know, out front, as long as it's a little bit, as long as you got a little bit of wave action, or up in the bay, those fish seem to be somewhere almost every day. It's just a little, just requires a little bit of driving around. And then along the South County beaches, it's been much more blitzy. So, you know, some days you're getting out there, you're seeing a lot of bait coming out of the breachways, and there's nothing going on. Other times, it's an absolute just gong show. Um, I got this video from my buddy Greg Taylor. Um, and I mean, just look at all the peanut bunker. These are nice sized peanuts being pushed right up to his feet. He said there were mullet in the mix. There were bass from schoolies up to 20 pounds. There were bluefish up to like 12 pounds and there were albies cutting through it too. Um, but it's one of those things where it's the game for people who can just put in tons and tons of time because, um, this isn't happening every day, you know? So if you live in the area or if you've got three vacation days in a row and you don't mind sleeping in the car, um, you know, that's, that's a good place to concentrate on to find, you know, short duration, like crazy bouts of action. Um, but it's definitely not reliable. Um, as I alluded to, you know, out of block, they're getting some better fish, both Southeast and Southwest, um, parts of the Island. And, um, I've been hearing of fish up to, up to the mid 40 pound range. I think the biggest one I heard of was like 49 inches and weighed about 43, 44 pounds. Guys are getting them on a, using a lot of different methods. I'm hearing of some nice fish being taken on top water at first light, just cast it into the rocks and then out on the deeper ledges, uh, guys bouncing with soft plastics or three weighing eels are getting some really nice fish as well. Uh, bottom fishing wise, Sea bass has been unbelievable. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of really nice catches out around Block Island, fish up to five pounds. It almost seems like they've leveled up, like it's just gotten better from last week to this week. Um, a lot of guys have been out looking for codfish and they've been scoring. They've been finding a lot of cod on just about all those deeper rock piles, um, both east and west of Block and, and probably south as well. And um, you know, topping out at like 15, 16 pounds. They're getting a lot of keeper sized fish right now. Um, in closer to shore, the Tatog bite has also kind of taken a half step up from last week. It's getting a little bit better. Hearing about better shore catches now. 
And I mean, these next like three to four weeks are some of the best you're going to find all year for catching a sizable blackfish from shore. And uh, really, I mean, Rhode Island, there's really no better place in the re region to do it. Um, you know, you've got a lot of deep water close to shore, you got a lot of just gnarly terrain. And, um, you know, that's what these fish like. And, you know, you don't have to be, you don't have to look for a place you can hit 40 feet either. I mean, sometimes some of these big fish are in five, seven, ten feet of water. Um, so if tog is your thing, now is your time to start. And let's see, what else have I got? The, the scut bite in Rhode Island is also phenomenal. Um, I haven't heard anybody complain about that, whether it's, you know, Watch Hill, Point Judith, Newport, or even up inside the bay. Uh, it's all been great. This has also been a great snapper bluefish year. We're seeing those at the breachways. We're seeing those all throughout Narragansett Bay at any of the estuary mouths. Um, and they're getting a little bit bigger now, you know, they're getting in that, you know, up to like seven or eight inches. And I mean, they are also fueling some of these better blitzes. You, you'll you see these snappers getting chased by some of the bigger bass. And, you know, I think that's something that's often overlooked, but they are, they do make a great bait fish. And, um, you know, they, they're they in numbers I haven't seen in many years this year. So now let's check in with Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters. Let's see what they're seeing out their way. Hey guys, it's Mike at Watch Hill Outfitters just checking in with you. A little bit different uh, week coming up into the fall. Uh, Albies are still around, a little spotty now and then. We're seeing them pop in and pop out. Uh, breachways have been good for them. Typical baits and a lot of peanut bunker around. So try to mimic the peanut bunker and you'll definitely get into some Albies. Jimmy Aiello has got some nice bass that he's been catching down at the beach. Uh, he's the local purveyor of uh, Bay Street Deli good deli sandwich shop but he's closed up for the winter and uh, is doing a lot of fishing catching quite a bit of blues we also have some codfish going on some of the guys are actually getting out even though the weather is not great and getting into some nice cod uh, we're gonna look forward to that as we get into the winter season got some nice blackfish from shore the other day uh, we was watching the guys right over at Kwani and uh, some of the guys are doing pretty well on some local rocks We've actually got lots of green crabs in the store, so come on in and uh, get into some blackfish. Thanks, Mike. You guys do a great job as usual. Uh, glad to see you guys back after that break last week. And um, now let's take a look at what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash. This week in the Coastal Kayak Clash, unpredictable weather hampered efforts, but Chris Needs was able to upgrade his second place Albie, putting him in first place for the category and cutting into Justin Oser's tournament leading score, dropping it from 11 to 10. Something to consider is that there are three anglers sitting just off the leaderboard with three points each. Chris Neves, Albert Green, and Justin Eines. One well-placed entry for any one of these guys could really shake up the scoreboard. We'll see what next week has in store for the CKC. Stay tuned. And that's the story I've got for you guys around this week. All right, as we move over into Connecticut, um, there's really two places that have start, started to stand out as the places to go for bass. Um, obviously around the Connecticut River has been good. We talked about that last week. You know, anytime we get some rain, it's pushing some bunker out and some better fish are coming up. Um, but there's been an even more reliable bite that's been going on for a couple weeks now. And that is really f along the beaches from really from the Connecticut River over to the Thames and then sometimes beyond. Um, now this isn't to say that that whole stretch is always lit up. It's not, but there have been just regular occurrences of big blitzes of fish, you know, and um, most of these fish are not on like, they're not giants, but you're getting fish from 20 to like 35 inches, seeing regular action. They're pushing peanut bunker. There's some on some mullet in there. There's some on some adult bunker. And, um, you know, there have been some bigger fish in the mix as well. I've seen some pictures of fish into the 25 pound range, and I've seen some blue fish that were, you know, well into the teens. Uh, taken on these same schools. So I think the bait has just been sitting there long enough and getting pounded by these smaller bass long enough that now some bigger bluefish and some bigger bass are starting to show up with better regularity. It's a place that I would concentrate on if that was an area I fished regularly. And, um, you know, surf guys can kind of hit all the shore access points and use the binoculars to find, uh, find where the birds are that day and then run out there and get it done. If you're in the boat, you're at a huge advantage. You know, you can put in at one end and just kind of putter along the whole stretch and you're going to find probably multiple pods of fish feeding. And uh, like I said, you've got a good chance of getting some nice fish. And if you find some fish that are on some bigger bait, 
I would go back there after dark. I'd throw some chunks or some eels, and I think you'd have a chance of going up another 10 pounds. You might get a 35 pounder out of that. Um, the other place that's been really consistent is like the reefs off of Clinton and Westbrook. Um, so like Southwest Reef, Six Mile Reef, um, some of these smaller ones that I'm not thinking of the names of off the top of my head right now, but that area has had a lot of keeper bass, a lot of slot fish, you know, you're getting 28s, you're getting 32s, you're getting 35s, you're getting some overs. Um, but the bass bite has been very good there. There's been a lot of smoker sized bluefish in that area. And, um, you know, if you, if you take a few minutes off and drop some jigs to the bottom, you got a great chance of getting some sea bass there as well. And then speaking of sea bass, the best area still is that like middle corridor of, um, of the sound, you know, kind of just going from Niantic over to, mm, say Clinton, and then just kind of draw two lines that head straight across, head due south. And if you fish in that box, that's where you're going to have your best shot at getting sea bass right now. Haven't heard of too many really big ones, but a lot of solid fish in that like three to three and a half pound range. And the fish aren't terribly deep. You can get them in, you can even get them in 20 feet of water. But I think the best uh, depth to target right now is like 40 to 55 feet. Um, any, any noticeable structure, any ledges, any big rock piles or wreck, they're all going to have these fish. And the advice that I would give you is the same advice I give all the time. Don't be afraid to move around. If you're getting bit, but you're not getting many keepers, move on to the next hump, move on to the next wreck, move on to the next reef, and just keep moving around until you find better fish. That always seems to be the best way to find some of these better sea bass. Uh, fluking, it's been pretty much dead. I am not hearing anything fluke-wise except for guys fishing out at Montauk. If a fluke is your, uh, you know, if you need that last fluke of the year, that's where I'd be headed. I, I would bypass everything and go right to Montauk. You know, you figure all these fish that have been in the sound, and even all the fish that have been off the Rhode Island beaches, they are all heading that way. They're all heading offshore, and the ones that are in the sound are going to have to cut through between the islands, and they're going to have to go right around Montauk, so it makes perfect sense to, uh, to put your time bouncing bucktails into that area. And let's see, scup fishing remains phenomenal. Uh, throughout the state, I can't see this slowing down until the, just the water temperature pushes them out. It's probably been the best pro gear I've ever seen. I haven't heard anything about weak fish this week. Uh, let's see what else we got. Well, why don't we, let's go over to Max. Let's hear what's happening out in the Western Sound. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. This week, it's still all about the bluefish. There's been monster blues in the backside of the islands, places like 11B, 28C, and to our east, there've been at middle ground. Guys are getting them up past 15 pounds on the fly rod, top water plugs, and diamond jigging the deep water reefs. There's been a lot of cocktail sized blues around the islands and also the striped bass fishing is really picking up with all the small bait around. So plug and shallow around the islands, we've seen fish to 20 pounds. Porgy bite is still going really strong. Guys are still catching off the beaches, the wrecks, the deep water reefs, shallow water reefs, you name it. And the snapper bluefish are all in our harbors and running our beaches. So that's always a lot of family fun. If you're looking for sea bass, I would still target some deeper water but look for them to start to move shallow the opening of blackfish season. And fluke. Fluke, eh, all season has been kind of steady pick, slow. I mean, you really got to pound the areas, but this time of year, it's, it's a mix. You could be shallow or deep with all the bait. So if you catch a keeper, I would hit a mark and then just keep kind of working that spot. And look for the hardtails to start showing up. There's been some reports local around the islands, a couple caught here and there. Uh, there's also been some across the sound, like places like Crane's Neck, Port Jeff area. The fish are still thick to our east, like Fishers, Rhode Island. So hopefully this easterly blow really starts helping these fish move into our waters. Thanks and good luck. And now let's check out what's going on in the Dreamboat Contest. This week's Dreamboat Challenge has Luma Race replacing his initial fluke entry with an even bigger fat flatty. He replaces his 10.2 pound fluke with an 11.5 pound fluke. And Chris Teisler from New Jersey entered a 12.3 pound fluke at Clark's Landing Marina in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. 
There are two Mahi entries, one 21 pounder from Robert J. Berg and the other from former Dreamboat Grand Prize winner Dave Weissman with a 14.3 pound Mahi. Overall, no change to the top four standings in the contest. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the Fisherman Subscriber Only Multi Species Fishing Competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft Center Console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. And that's the story that I have for you guys this week. Um, the fishing has been great for stripers and not as good as any of us would like for Albies and Benito, um, but we still have time. You know, I, I'm keeping all my fingers and toes crossed right now. We still have time for the Albies to filter in and to kind of fire things up. But I have to say, as much of an optimist as I am, I'm not feeling terribly optimistic about this. Uh, one thing I am feeling optimistic about is these next few days at the canal. I just have a feeling that we're going to see another good set of, uh, of breaking tides. It might not be great, but I have a feeling it's going to be good. And... Um, you know, we'll see if I'm right. But uh, thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. Head over to the website. Check out what we've got going on over there. If you're not a subscriber, I think you'll be uh, impressed with what we've got to sh what we've got to offer. And uh, good luck this week. And I'll see you guys next week. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.